Elizabeth Clare Prophet preaches the everlasting gospel and brings to you the true teachings of Jesus Christ and the illumination of the scriptures by the Holy Spirit. We gather together on Pentecost to attend the descent of the Holy Ghost. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This phenomenon of Almighty God, the impartation of his spirit unto you, is your fiery destiny. You must pursue it, win it, become the chalice, carve out that sacred cup. This you must have prior to your ascension in the light. Therefore, be about your Father's business, seeking and finding the Holy Spirit lawfully, lawfully and not inordinately, as some do, desiring with an inordinate desire to have the Spirit of God that they might be thought well among their brethren, and therefore inviting the possessing spirits that are not of Almighty God, and I preach to you this word this day, that there are preachers abroad in the land whom I have viewed. And one day I will show you the tape recordings of their sermons and I will illustrate to you the possessing demons, the imposters of the Holy Ghost, by which they preach, not with the power of Almighty God. And their congregations are fooled because they have not tasted of the cup of the Holy Grail they have not drunk the blood of Christ, nor eaten his body. And therefore the example must be forthcoming from those who have the word and who must appreciate that word above all others who have been given so great a salvation, such a mighty gift. This is our gift this day. And the Holy Spirit will come to you when you are prepared it came to the nine-year-old boy, Mark Prophet, who received that power in prayer as he knelt night and day in a humble place, an attic room that was cold in winter and hot in summer. But he prayed not with inordinate desire, but with the humility of a soul, born to be a servant of God, and you are that very soul, born to be a servant of God, and yet failing to cast off the debris, the unnecessary, the unwanted vanities, the emotional bouts and indulgences, the ups, the downs, the questioning. And therefore you are not steady and the grail cannot be lowered from your Christ self and it cannot be filled because you have not sought more than all else this goal of Pentecost and there were dwelling at Jerusalem in the holy city Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak 
in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. Indeed, the new wine of the Holy Spirit, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, the body and blood of the entire spirit of the great white brotherhood is the descent of Pentecost, the power of Alpha and Omega unto you that descends clearly, the crystal clear river of water of life from your I am presence and enters when the channels are crystal clear, when the chakras are spinning. Is it not worth more than all these things? Can we not cast all these things aside, the pettiness and the prior concerns, and seek after the living bread of life? Ye men and women of Israel, of the flame of all that is real, Hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Look not to 2,000 years ago. Look at the slaying of your Christ self by your own words, by your own deeds. Count the many times you have crucified Christ, and therefore he does not dwell in your temple and undo the crucifixion, remove the nails, take him down from the cross. Ye men and women of Israel, I speak to you. Pentecost 1984, take him down from the cross and let thy words be uttered in holiness. Let thy heart be holy unto God and revere him for thy temple is his habitation. Let all uncleanness, therefore, be cast into the sacred fire and fight the fight and win over every beast of the carnal mind. It is today. We do not blame Pilate or the Sanhedrin or the Romans or the Jews. We look to ourselves. This is the hour to cease crucifying Christ in our body temples, in America, in the world. Let those who are truly the followers of the Messiah, Jew and Christian alike, let them heed the word of the apostle and the power of the Holy Ghost, for this message is for Jew and Gentile alike. It is the power of the Holy Spirit, and the Messiah is your Lord, is your real and true self, the one God, the one God of Israel, the one God of the I Am race, the one God of America and all nations. The God of Moses is the God of all people. It is the I Am presence. Prepare him room. For God hath raised up Jesus Christ. God hath raised up the living word with you. Having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Your souls cannot long remain in death when you have the fire of God to break these shackles of the not-self, the unreal self. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, 
for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. David saw the Lord, his own Christ self. He saw the Lord, his I am presence, and he knew the Lord was with him. He was a man of God, a soul to be cherished of all people. And he wrote, Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou, my Lord, my Christ self, my I am presence, wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of light. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. This is the testimony of David. David received the promises of God because he understood the office and the mantle that he bore to Israel. He feared not to call himself the Holy One. The Holy One of God will not see corruption because his Lord is with him. If you do not value and cherish the mantle of your office as a disciple of the living word, you will enter in to the mouthings of foul spirits filled with self-condemnation, self-depreciation, self-worthlessness. How can you stand before God and behave as a moth? How can you indulge yourself in the self-pity that follows self-condemnation when God is where you stand, complaining and bickering and backbiting? This is the nature of one who sins against the Holy Ghost. These things ought not to be, and therefore shun them and know that you are the Holy One of God in potential and you revere the divine spark and know that one day when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, that divine spark will be kindled anew and there will be in the temple a conflagration and the flame will fill all of thy temple because thou hast revered it as God's and not thine own and put aside all vanity and vain imaginations, and vain conversation, and vain adoring of the body as though it were thine own possession and a thing apart from God's holiness. Thy body is not matter, it is spirit. It is a living flame, and therefore it is clothed upon with the raiment of Almighty God. Enter into his gates with praise and thanksgiving. Enter into the consciousness of your I am presence this day. Claim it. For this day the power of God shall fill the earth and the darkness shall be swallowed up in the light that does not fail. Let us call in the name of our I am presence for the light of God to set us free, the light of God to expand. Sisters of light, 
let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne, he, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord, the I am that I am, said unto my Lord, my holy Christ self, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly, that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Hear, my beloved, on the day of Pentecost, when the apostles are gathered, following the ascension of Jesus Christ, Peter speaks to them of the promise of the Father unto David, that David would not suffer the affliction of death and hell, but would be spared the corruption by the coming of the one, the living Christ. This prophecy of Almighty God unto David was the revelation of the future incarnation of his own soul as Jesus of Nazareth. This has been interpreted to mean that Jesus has come out of the house of David by a linear descent established in the descendancy of Joseph and Mary. But the descent of the Holy Spirit and the fire of Christ, that fire of Christ is not by the flesh but of the soul and the spirit, and therefore he did view his mission and the fulfillment. Yet in my flesh shall I see God. Therefore the union of Christian and Jew and Gentile and Muslim is seen in the fiery descent of that one and in the magnificent path of his calling, his overcoming, his preparation of the chalice to be the chalice of the living word. Because David lived and won his victory over the flesh, over the fallen angels and the gods and the devils and every temptation, therefore he was born again in the likeness of that Lord, whom he perceived with him and at his right hand. This is cause for great rejoicing, great praise, when we understand that the separation is made and yet there is a universal oneness of all people who love the same great heart who delivered the songs and was resurrected and moves amongst us yet to deliver his word and comfort. Beloved ones, when you go to Jerusalem, in the very same building you find the tomb of David and the Jews praying. And above that room you find the upper room where Jesus gathered his apostles. And there you may also go and gather in the very same house, as if defining the levels of consciousness of the spirit and matter cosmos and achievement of our Lord and Savior. Do you see the divide and conquer tactics of the fallen ones, the false hierarchy imposters of the Holy Ghost? 
who separate and divide and saw asunder the precious children of the light. And the sons of Levi and the children of Israel and the Gentiles to whom Paul preached. Therefore we are come for the oneness of the Holy Ghost, described as cloven tongues of fire, a fire that is split in two, signifying it is the power of Alpha and Omega. Jesus instituted the Last Supper that we might celebrate communion, the body and the blood of our Lord. Yet after his ascension, he delivers that fire directly to them, not using the alchemy of transubstantiation of the bread and the wine, but the direct conference of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And so they are empowered. They have followed all rituals. They are ready for the consummation of the grace of the living presence of our God. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, As I say unto you this day, for you also have need of it. Repent, repent of your karma, repent of your momentums of habit. Shed the old garments, be free today. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins for the reduction, for the consuming, for the erasing of the cause, effect, record, and memory of the desire of sin and the act of sin, the memory of sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. He will call them, not I and not thee. Our God will call them, and they shall come to the altar of the Holy Grail, and they shall be baptized, and they shall all know the Lord, from the least of them unto the greatest. They shall know the I am that I am. And with many other words did Peter testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. And I say to you, by the gift of Pentecost, save yourselves from this untoward generation of your past karma. The old self and the old man with his deeds, cast them off and become the new man who will smite the Jordan and part it by the power of the mantle of our God. He will perform these things through you, and the tide of world communism and totalitarian movements will abate. It will go down because the Holy Spirit is with his people, and they are with him, and there is agreement and harmony and one accord in one place. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day were there added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. This is the community of the Holy Spirit. It only works when you have the Spirit. Otherwise, it degenerates into a commune, leaderless without the point of Christ or his standard, or the standard bearer, or the light of the Ancient of Days. This is world communism, sharing things in common, without the living word in the center, without the standard, the mediator, without bending the knee, it is unacceptable before the Lord God Almighty. And only the flow of the Holy Spirit can seal a people who desire to hold 
one cup, one communion, one body of God in common. This was the way proposed. It did not endure the centuries because of the absence of that perfect love and spirit and the recognition of the fire of the Holy Ghost in the midst of the community. They sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. He will add whom he will, those whom he deems should be saved each and every day. Make way for our God and for his elect. Clear thy temples, clear thy tabernacles, make them holy that the love of Christ might go forth from you and the power of conversion be with you always and always, my beloved. O oh, Holy Spirit, come unto me. 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 Public Access Program has been presented through the assistance of Church Universal and Triumphant, Box A, Malibu, California, 90265. If you would like to know more, call this number or write this address. <laughs>